I think that effective preaching will will take the vocabulary we already know, words like faith, uh, words like theodicy, you know, what do we do about suffering, um, justification, grace, all these terms that are rich because there's such a tradition behind them, but at the same time may have become, um, may have lost some of their power because they're used so much. Um, because in, 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 in the experiences of some, there's such lofty theological vocabulary that sometimes people don't seem like they ha- feel like they have access to words like grace or faith. So the question is, how do we energize them? How do we bring them down while still maintaining the tradition? And I think that's uh, one of the challenges before us. So like I said earlier, so, some of this language can become domesticated, can become oversimplified over time, um, especially in churches where we use the language over and over again. So one of the challenges is when people come in from the outside and they're not fluent with this kind of language, what messages are they getting? Um, how can we clarify what we mean by sin, both for people who are new and for people who have been sitting in our pews for years? I think one of the ways we can do that is by returning to the biblical text. So let's take a word like sin, for example. Um, in some of our churches, sin has become something, an individual act that you do to yourself that ultimately harms yourself. It's something that you do in secret, that you keep from other people. But if we actually look at how sin functions in the biblical text, in the Gospels, for example, it takes on a much wider dimension. Sin is not individual, it's communal. Sin is not something that we do in secret, but that ultimately will be laid out in public. Uh, Sin is what breaks apart not just our relationship with God, but breaks apart our relationship with one another. This is how sin functions in the biblical narrative, so that one of the ways that we can help break our complacency is to go back to Scripture and and realize how in many ways we've domesticated and narrowed these terms so much, um, oftentimes to meet some sort of cultural need or just because it's more comfortable for us. So Sometimes we have to rock ourselves from our complacency and find how these texts actually talk about these theological categories.